Good morning folks. Just a little bit of a um, off-the-cuff clip for you. I posted a picture of our cow peas. Now these cow peas aren't looking too healthy. That's because they've come to the end of their life. I've posted a clip on, or well a picture sorry, on Facebook just to show people how badly infested they are with aphids. There are loads of aphids there in all um, different parts of their life cycle, some with wings, some without. Um, they're down here as well. They're absolutely covering a lot of the beans out here. Uh, last week I came out and had a bit of a look and they were just peppering the leaves, everything. So I just blasted it with the hose, knocked the majority of them off um, and then just let them be for a week or so. They have a very, very fast life cycle. So yeah, they end up repopulating very quickly. Now, with the photo, a lot of people were saying um, spray it or, you know, try and get on top of them. I'm not going to do that, and if you've um, been with us for a while, you'll probably know why. Um, I like to breed ladybugs, and if you just like to have a look, if I can find them, oh, here we go, a lovely little colony in there. Probably about one, two, three, four, five, maybe six or so pupating ladybugs down in there. There's another one just down in there, and I've seen on the back side of this bean here, there is another very mature looking one just there so yes oh look and there's another one just up in there I'm trying to find larvae here and i just can't find any i've only found one small one earlier in my morning walk i found heaps but over the back here i'm now finding where are we come on camera here we go i'm now finding these ladybug larvae that are pupating absolutely everywhere so there's three more willing willing workers for the patch that are going to knock off loads of aphids for us these ladybugs are also patrolling the trombone squash next door, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I'm not too worried about the, the amount of aphids we've got on there. They're not going to go on to other plants. I mean, there's a couple on the squash here, but they're not really setting up shop. They're pretty much all a bean aphid. So once the plant is removed, I mean, these aphids are going to have nothing really to chomp on. Um, but what it does mean is while they are here, I'm boosting the number of ladybugs that we have in the patch. Later on in the season with the cabbages, we normally get a cabbage aphid on them. So hopefully there'll be enough numbers uh, of ladybugs in and around the garden that they can take care of that infestation. One thing I am thinking about doing is taking off a couple of these little pupae and putting them down in the other patch where I know there are a couple of aphids, nowhere near anything like this, just the odd one here or there. Um, so that'll boost the numbers down in there. Just quickly, if you don't have ladybug populations around to look after infestations like this, um, or you just want to knock them on the head, there's a couple of different methods you can use. You can use uh, water blasting with the hose, I've mentioned that before. You can use a um, soapy liquid spray, which is basically uh, one to two teaspoons of liquid soap, make it a pure one, not an antibacterial one. Castile soap's good in a litre of water or a quart of water and spray that on. What that does is it um, dries out the aphids um, outside and basically, yeah, they die that way. I just wanted to show you another beneficial insect that does freak a few people out, including myself to tell you the truth. So we've just got to be a little bit careful here. So in here what we have is a nest of paper wasps. Now these guys here, they're pretty, you know, benign. They're not like the other little black paper wasps we get that would have swarmed me by now, just for opening that up. Um, these guys feed on nectar and pollen and what they their purpose in the garden is actually to collect caterpillars and what they do is they deposit them in their little egg chambers for their larvae to consume. So they're, they're beneficial in that respect. Um, when they sting you, not very beneficial at all unless you like to do funny dances around the front yard. Um, but yeah, definitely something I'm very aware of and try and keep the kids away from. Uh, but yeah, I'm not too concerned about having them in the yard. These guys here though, they're in the control box for our solar panels on the roof. So they will need to come out at some point in time. Uh, because I don't want the um, the energy guys to come around, read the meters, and be stung by a whole heap of these guys. So, but as you can see, they're pretty placid. I'm only what about I'm less than a meter or less than a yard away from them, and they're leaving me alone. So, we'll just close them up and leave them to it. So, just down here below the back stairs on our sad-looking dwarf mulberry, I noticed the other day we have these little eggs. What these guys are, are common green lacewing eggs. You might notice that they're sitting on top of a bit of a stalk. That's just to keep them off the surface of the leaf to keep predators like ants away from them. Um, the little lacewings, the larvae themselves, they eat a host of pests like whiteflies, aphids, mites, scale, uh, mealybugs as well, probably a few others that I've forgotten. And the parents feed off nectar and pollen. So they're, you know, good pollinators around to have around the patch. 
So yeah, I just noticed that the other day, thought it was pretty interesting. So they're another good one to leave alone um, if you see them around. Just down here at the lime tree, we have another beneficial garden helper. A lot of people squirm at these guys and I actually know people who kill them, but see if we can get a good angle on him. I don't think it's going to turn out too well. But what we have here, if we can focus, is a spider. Now these guys here, they've taken care of a load, or oh, spooked him, they take care of a, lo of the, a load of the little grasshoppers, spit it out Robert, uh, the little baby grasshoppers, I've seen a fair few of them stuck in the nest, so they're always good at knocking those sort of things off. And what we have up here, Bianca spotted this yesterday, is a praying mantis usica, or usica. Um, I'll put the proper um, spelling up there for you. But it's basically a nest full of little baby praying mantis. They may have already hatched actually, I'm not too sure, don't know a lot about them, but um, these guys, I've seen them around the patch in all sizes. We've had tiny ones through, we've had large ones through. Um, I really love having these guys around the place. I've seen them munch on small grasshoppers, I've seen them take down larger ones, so definitely a beneficial insect to have around the patch. Other beneficial insects we get are parasitic wasps as well as assassin bugs and we get a few other small animals as well that help us out in the patch like the geckos that live in the wicking beds and barrels down the back along with the dragons. We get a fair few um, of the little native bearded dragons, the babies through the patch and they look after the odd grasshopper here and there as well as the frogs, the little green tree frogs. Would be interested to see in the comment section below the different beneficial insects and animals that you guys have that help you out in the patch. So there you go folks, there's a little bit of a look at that aphid infestation out the front and the ladybugs that have moved in to polish them off and also just a bit of a look at some of the other insects and arachnid that we have around the patch so yeah if you do have any comments questions or suggestions feel free to put them in the comment section below and i'll get back to you where i can other than that hope everyone's well and i'll catch you next clip cheers folks